right, so here's our first example involving trigonometric substitution. This one happens to be a definite integral, so we're going to have to pay attention to the bounds when we substitute. Um, but we'll start with this one. The reason why this is a good one to start with is we know what the answer should be, okay? y equals square root of 9 minus x squared is simply a half circle, all right? So it's the top half of the circle, uh, x squared plus y squared equals 9. So that's just a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin, right? Going from minus 3 to 3. And so we know what the, the area should be. The area should be, well, it's half a circle, so 1 half pi r squared. So 1 half pi times 3 squared. So we expect that we should get an answer of 9 pi over 2. Let's see if we do. All right. So we discussed that what we do is we look for the pattern and we, we try to figure out which of these three it matches and that suggests the substitution. 9 minus x squared fits the pattern for arc sine, right? So the substitution that we want to make is we want to let x equal to 3 sine theta, right? Which is really saying that theta is arc sine of x over 3, but leave it at that. dx then will be 3 cos theta d theta. And 9 minus x squared becomes 9 minus 9 sine squared theta, which is 9 cos squared theta. Now, um, some people like to kind of, you know, pull out one of these little triangles to kind of help them s feel their way through these things. If you find that helps, um, go ahead. Working with identities tends to be a little bit more reliable, but what we could do is say, okay, if that angle is theta, and if sine theta is x over 3, right, then we can say that's x, that's 3, right, um, opposite over hypotenuse. We know that the remaining side must be 9 minus x squared, which, of course, is the thing that we want. Um, now, that tells me that uh, the adjacent side, right, 9 minus x squared is the thing that we're interested in. So sometimes you can kind of look at that and you can say, hey, this is, this is what? Well, cos theta is that divided by 3. Um, so this side must just be 3 cos theta. Um, that often helps. But we can just go through the machinery and we'll get to the answer in the end. Um, the only other thing to, to keep in mind is that theta, so theta is arc sine of x over 3, right? So if x is equal to 3, that means theta is arc sine of 1, which is pi over 2. And if x is equal to minus 3, that means that theta is arc sine of minus 1, which is minus pi over 2. Okay? So we're going to make those substitutions. Right? Um, and, and don't worry about the fact that, I mean, that's not, you know, I mean, the angles here, this is not like polar coordinates, right? So we're not saying that the angle should go from 0 to pi. We want to make the change of variables that make sense for this substitution, right? So we can now put everything in. Minus 3 becomes minus pi over 2. 3 becomes pi over 2. Now, square root of 9 minus x squared becomes the square root of 9 cos squared theta, right? Becomes 3 cos theta. Um, and dx is also 3 cos theta, right? So that first 3 cos theta comes from the fact that the square root of 9 minus x squared will be the square root of 9 cos squared, which is the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of cos squared is cos. The other 3 cos theta comes from dx. Okay, so I have 9 times the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 
of cos squared theta d theta, and we recall from the last section that if you have an even power of cosine, or, or sine for that matter, we need to use an angle reduction formula. We need to use the fact that cos squared can be written as, so it's one half, I'm gonna pull the two out front. So it's nine over two, integral from minus pi over two to pi over two of one plus cos two theta, okay? So remember that cos squared is one plus cos two theta all divided by two. I put the two out front just to keep things clean. Now we integrate. 9 over 2 times theta plus 1 half sine 2 theta. And we evaluate from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. And here you'll notice that you know, we don't have to worry about getting things back in terms of x because we went to the trouble of changing the limits. If we didn't bother changing the limits, there's a bit more work involved. I'll, I'll, let me answer this, and then we'll, we'll, go, we'll go about it, OK? Um, OK. So we're going to get 9 over 2, OK, times pi over 2 plus, so sine of, so 2 times pi over 2 gives me pi. Sine of pi is 0, all right? Um, there's the upper limit. Lower limit, minus pi over 2, again, 0, minus pi over 2 plus pi, yeah, so it's pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi, so I get 9 pi over 2, as expected. Good. So we're happy about that. Um, now, if we hadn't bothered to change the limits, we'd have, we'd, we'd have a little bit more work on our hands, right? Now, by the way, we got the right answer, yeah, 9 pi over 2, we're happy about that. Um, from here, if we were doing the, just the indefinite integral, um, right? Well, theta, theta is arc sine of x over 3. We have that there. What do you do with this, the sine 2 theta? Well, we'd have to do this. We'd have to say 1 half of sine 2 theta. Well, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. So this becomes simply sine theta times cos theta. And then we have to come back over to here, and we have to say, well, look, sine theta is x over 3. Cos theta, well, we can, we can kind of solve it from here, right? So, so we know that 3 cos theta is the square root of 9 minus x squared, or get it from the triangle if you want. So cos theta is that square root 9 minus x squared over 3, right? Um, so if we were doing the indefinite integral, actually more work, right? Um, because we get arc sine x over 3 plus x root 9 minus x squared over 9, right? That's the, that's the indefinite integral. And then you still have to plug in your, your limits, right? Your 3 and your minus 3. Um, so maybe you didn't bother when you're doing simple substitution, you didn't bother to change your limits as you went. Once you get to trig substitution, I think you'll decide that it's worth your while. If you're doing a definite integral, go to the trouble of changing the limits. It'll simplify the problem for you.